<clears throat> so that's the dubstep section. Any any questions, preliminary questions about this section, or do you want me to just dive in and kind of show how I did that? Dive in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all enjoying this. <laughs> all right. I'm diving in. All right. So let's start with this synth right here. Let me loop it. Okay. So that synth right there is the same synth from Dub Disco, the beginning synth. But I just did some filter automations and some distortion automations. So let's zoom in here and take a look at what's going on. Now, if you look at the synth, I have it going da 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 da. So, so you got. Uh, let me see how I'm going to describe this. This is okay. So this is this is how I set up the baseline. Now, what I did around that was I set up this frequency and I um, automated these by do-it-yourself wobbles. So a lot of people use LFOs for wobbles, but I actually prefer to write my own wobbles. So what I did was I wrote this frequency starting really low, coming up high, and then cutting off so it makes its, its own little wow sound. So listen to it as it goes. See how it sounds, it sounds like wow, 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 instead of eh, 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 eh. That's that filter right there. Another thing I did was I added the I automated the body scale over here to wobble as well. And the body scale, let's take a look back at the distortion unit, was this section here. And that's what I was saying earlier, that this is that cool resonance thing, that if you automate the scale from it, you're going to get some cool effects. So let me see if I can mute it and see if you guys can hear it without it. And then um, see, yeah, all right. So I'm going to mute it and see what, listen to it. You guys hear that difference? We have a we have a periodic tornado that arrives. Okay. <laughs> what is that? A, is that something on a re drum or something? A sample that's plays out that like oh the that, the big crash thing. Yeah, it's like a reverse delay crash thing. That's a that's a that's a, a sample. Let me let me actually loop it in a part without that because that's going to get kind of annoying. Does that happen here? <laughs> Let's just let's do it here. Okay, what's this sound like? No. Okay. So this synth, I have it pitching down. I have the frequency going, and here I actually did not do anything to the body scale. But basically. What this comes down to is I'm taking the same synth from the electro part and I'm automating some wobbles with the frequency and I'm also automating some uh, changes in the body scale. Uh, and that way you get a really cool effect of it kind of sounding like it's talking to you. I'm not going to say it's Skrillexy. A lot of people want the Skrillex sound. And actually there's a great tutorial online right now for a reason Skrillex sound. I think it's, it's the best Skrillex ripoff I've heard so far. Um, and yeah, so check it out. Just YouTube Skrillex on um, Reason, and I'm sure you can find it. But to make it talk, automate the frequency, automate the body scale, and yeah, that's that part of the baseline. Now, another part of the baseline is let's see what else I got going on in here. Um, it's probably pretty far down. That's the clap. Symbols. Another clap. <laughs> Okay, so this synth, as you can hear, is just a ARP on a square wave that I filter up and I pitch up so you get this effect with it. Let me solo it. Oops. Um, and I, I have that in there. I also have... This synth is pretty cool. That's a cool synth. I think the coolest part about dubstep is these like underlying pads that kind of get filtered in and out of it. And that's a that's that's what goes on there. That's just air noise. OK, 
Okay, so this is a sample, a sample bass sound that sounds like this, and I just put it in an ARP so it goes, and then when I have it play, I automated the ARP to go from six, from eighth notes to sixteenth, so you can hear it's gonna go bum 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 ba da ba da bum bum. And I also layered a sub bass below that and these vocals to do the same thing. So these vocals are doing the exact same thing. Okay. So I have those layered on top and those are, have, I put some distortion on a little vocal sample. Um, what, what is this? Bass, bass. Uh, this is a sub bass I have in there. Oh, okay, this is a little yarp yarp sample that I put in there. <laughs> little like Satan burps, it sounds like almost. All right. S. Foreman okay. uh, is asking, how long did it take to get that track? I, I think he means to, I guess, make all these sounds, kind of work it all up. Um, this track, do you, do you think I should say in hours or in days? Cause I, I, I'd say in hours, this took maybe 25 hours, but I, I probably took three weeks of time just to put it all together. Cause I, I had a lot of other stuff going on. That's the thing is I usually work on a couple different projects every day. So hours work, this is probably 25 gotcha. hours. And re maybe related to that, um, our dark wants to know, uh, when you're creating a track, do you work linearly? Or do you write the chorus or the drops first? Or Totally depends on the song. For this song, I started from the start of the track. And I worked. So this is the intro. And I worked from the intro into the build. And I started intro to build. So that was all linear. I then think I skipped to the dubstep section actually because i was i was thinking about just making all dub dubstep songs so i made the dubstep part next and then i realized that I, I wanted to have at least an electro at the beginning um so i then made the electro section and then i made a break that bridged the gap so i worked intro to build then the dubstep at the end then back to the main drop the first drop then the break and then i transferred the break into the dubstep at the end and then uh an outro i'm gonna ask a somewhat so, um uh, naive maybe ignorant question but uh, I'll right. ask it. I'll be the one that sticks my neck out and asks it. Um, okay. Starting with electro, I'm going to a dubstep. This sign, this like sort of genre hopping. Is that yes? Um, is that something that's just done and in vogue now, or is that something that well, sort of okay. people are playing with at the moment, and you're playing with it too? Well, I'd say in the last three years, both electro and dubstep have really taken it off to a new level. I mean, electro had a huge boom in '06. I'm not gonna forget about that time in 2006 we had justice and mastercraft and that was huge and then it was kind of just a down period and now it's been on its way back up especially with dubstep as well dubstep has really become part of the mainstream in america whereas it was not huge in america for a while and was way bigger in the uk and canada and other parts of the world but in america it's become a lot bigger as has electro lately and i think because the styles they are very different especially in tempo but they're both using these really grimy synths. I mean, as I showed, I used the same synth from the electro section as the dubstep section. Um, they, they're using the same sounds, but uh, at different tempos. So a lot of DJs these days like to incorporate both electro and dubstep into their sets. And that can be a hard thing to do because it's not easy to mix a song that's at one, 128 into 140 um, unless you... I mean, you can either warp one track to be much faster or you could slam a song in really quickly, but there's not a really great way to transition. So I was thinking I would make a song that was started out electro so you can mix it out of your electro section of your set and then it would turn into dubstep. So by the time you're done with this track, you can mix into dubstep. This is, this is my idea of a transition track. And if I do make this an original, I'll probably call it the transition or something like that because this is a track you can use to to bridge the gap between electro and dubstep, which a lot of DJs like to do in their sets. And there's, I'm not the first to do this. There's tons of songs that do do this. Um, but I just wanted to have one, at least for my own sets, and see if other people wanted to use it. I, I thought I would make this. So that was the idea behind the tempo change. I wouldn't recommend making many songs with a tempo change, because it really does throw off DJs. Because a lot of times a DJ will buy a song. They don't even have time to listen to it before they spin it. So if someone were playing my song and they hadn't listened to it before, 
and they didn't know that it turned into dubstep at the end, they could be really thrown off. And if they don't, I yeah. I don't want to let that comment go by. Did you say that often a DJ will not listen to a song before they spin it? Is that really true? Yeah, I think okay. So the the difference between today's DJ and DJs from the past is that with all the software available and for DJing these days, it really does allow the DJ to not have to listen to their own music very much. They can download the song day of and play it. And what I mean by that is there's programs now like Tractor and Ableton that beat match for you. So you don't have to worry about beat matching. And then there's even programs such as mixed and key that will tell you what songs will mix into other songs and not go out of key okay. and actually sound good now, together. So that, that, that creates a lot of DJs who will just, first of all, before I, before I freak out about that, um, yes. is that, you're a DJ, so is that something you do? Am I about to freak out about something you do? No. Okay, good. I, good. I, I, then what the hell? Seriously? <laughs> That's crazy. Well, I guarantee you many people who are listening probably do use Tractor and Ableton. Wow. I, there's there's a lot. It's it's And I, you know what? I used to feel bad about it, but it's just, I don't know. It kind of feels like I'm an old man, even though I'm only 21. I feel like it's like... It's just the the technology is changing, and so you got to stick with it. And I'm personally, I love to beat match, so I'll always use Serato. I use Serato with CDs, so I can. It still just feels like CDs, and I'll use CDs on occasion as well. Um, I'm not ready to make the switch to a program that beat matches for me, but many DJs do that. Wow. As far as mixed and key goes, mixed and key. I I hated on mix, mixed and key for about two and a half years. And I recently downloaded it, and I, I haven't given myself to it yet, but I definitely do analyze my tracks and find out what keys they're in. And I do use it for guidance sometimes. I wouldn't put my full faith in it. I don't have faith in mixing key like that yet. But I think that it's cool to have a program that will at least tell you the key of songs, especially for someone like me who's not uh, a classically trained musician. So I don't have an ear that will be like, oh, that's the, in the key of this. So it's cool for a program to be able to tell me what key stuff are in, but I wouldn't use it religiously. I wouldn't. Um, do my whole sets upon mixed and key. I don't think that that's a good idea. I see. But you know, I don't. I, if that's what you do, go for I it. Think, I think I, as long as you do a good set, I'm impressed. I think. What, I think just what sort of struck me is that, like, for all the you know, there's a there's a probably fairly undeserved criticism of DJs by people that aren't in the know that oh, they're just spinning records and you know that's all they do and they're they they're up there putting on a show, but they're really just queuing up record after record. And it's like, right. okay, well, I know that's not true, and I give all props to DJs, but. Uh huh. Um, but then it's like, oh, wait, guys, you, you're not even listening to the song. Like, I can't even defend you at that point. It's like, yeah. Then you know, it's true. So yeah. But and I mean, the, I don't know how many DJs will not listen to a song ever, but I know there's a bunch of DJs who will at least maybe just download it, listen to it once quickly, and then throw it in their crate for spinning later. I don't know if there's anyone who will download a song and then literally have not listened to a second of it before DJing. I'd say that's a risky thing to do. I mean, if you <laughs> are confident to do that, that's fine. But I, the, I would always see that as a risk. But I think there's a high possibility that someone might download a track like this one and only listen to the first drop before they're like, okay, yeah, I'll spin this, and then not even know that there's dubstep at the end. And if they're not a dubstep DJ and they don't have any dubstep afterwards, they're going to be kind of screwed by the end of that mix because they're going to be stuck with this dubstep outro at 140 and if they have no other songs like that then it's going to be a tricky transition back into electro at the end so this i i, I really want to make this song clear when it gets released that this is both electro and dubstep so people i see do not get scared by that second drop i see let me just ask you yeah. um i'll put you on the spot here are you doing okay on time because i know everyone's totally digging this uh oh yeah okay. i'm i'm fine okay we got um we got a couple questions coming in. i just want to make sure that uh i don't want to detract from any other sound learning we can do uh, by by asking these but some people are asking yeah no it's fine i got time what's up some people want to know some gig related questions so like okay. um one of them will uh, hard hard b hard by wants to know uh like your favorite gig your largest gig uh, the biggest okay. DJ you mixed with. I guess he wants some uh, some bragging. All right. I'd say my favorite gig I ever played. Okay, favorite is definitely going to be different than biggest because biggest does not mean favorite by any means. Um, my favorite gig might have actually been this past weekend. It was called NECA Festival in Palm Springs, and it was it was not a big crowd, but it was just like the crowd was having so much fun and I was having so much fun. 
And they were very willing to let me experiment with different genres because I get stuck sometimes with a very young crowd that really only want driving electro house. And I, I, I'm a fan of so many different types of genres of EDM that I, I really love to bounce around different genres when I spin. And this crowd was willing to let me do whatever, and they were digging it. So that was, that was such a great experience. I love when a crowd is just with you the whole way. Now, my biggest show was probably the one that you filmed, Control at the Avalon. Okay. Um, and what, it, what it's, it's somewhere in the thousands. I don't know how big Avalon is, it's, but it's yeah, it's, it's big. It's somewhere along there. I mean, I just played another big one in Hollywood last night or two nights ago. It was a, about 1,200 people, I think. I played, I, I played a bunch of shows at around 1,200 people. Um, that's like the big side of things. I think Control may have been up to 2,000 people. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> But I haven't played any of the major festivals yet, like Coachella or Lollapalooza, where you get 40,000, 50,000 people yet. That would be really cool. I'm excited for that to happen someday, hopefully. I would, gotcha. That's, that's an experience I would love to have. Gotcha. To answer your question, S. Foreman, uh, or I'm going to be uh, – I, I filmed him for an artist feature, and it is coming up. Uh, I'm just – you know, I'm – I'm kind of on TV instead of editing, so <laughs> it's been pushed a bit, but it is coming. Okay, so um, oh, uh, just another one, and then we'll, we'll get back to some sound design stuff. But um, okay. a- any chance of coming to gig in England? I don't know if that's an invite or okay. Which... Well, I uh, believe me when I say this. I know that you guys are out there. If anyone, if there's a bunch of Englanders out there, I mean, I, I just according to my Facebook statistics. You guys are like one of my biggest markets, but I haven't had many offers come in yet from England. I haven't had enough to come in to make it worth it to come out there. Although I will tell you this, I do have a pretty good offer coming in for Austria coming up. And if I can make my way to Austria, I think I'm going to set up a whole little European tour. And if that happens, then yes, I will be coming to England. But if you want to speed up the process, I would just talk to your local promoters and Put in a good word for me, and maybe we can work something out. That'd be <laughs> that's the easiest way to tell you the truth because right now I'm not getting many offers just in England. Cool. Yeah, create demand. Come on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, all right. Well, there's a, a a question that's coming in from the Era Light, and it gets us back into the the actual production side of things. Uh, he wants to know: Do you use a keyboard to record your song, or is it all programmed? Uh, I use this guy. So it is a keyboard, but it's my computer keyboard. So uh, I guess the answer is yes, I do use a keyboard, but I do about half with my computer keyboard like this, and then I do about the other half of the time I'm in edit mode, and I am drawing in where I want the notes to go. Like that. Gotcha. That's, yes. Okay, cool. So um, uh, blow our minds. What else you got? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, would you guys, now I'm going to do another question for you guys to see what you guys want to do next. Would you like me to go into a drum step song? So it's going to be like dubstep, but a little faster. And this one's just a clip of something I wrote on the airplane the other day. Um, so it's not, not, I have no idea if that song will be released, but I'll at least be able to show you a little bit about drum step. Would you like me to go into a big room house song? So it's going to be more of like the commercial clubby house side. It still has, I put distortion on the bass line, so it's a little bit edgier than a lot of house music, but it's more on the housey side. And then I also can go on to more of a complex, drolly, I'd almost say progressive house song. So that one's like a happy electro song. Mm-hmm. What, do you guys, what do you guys want to go into now? The, the forum is, uh, the votes are coming in. All right. Uh, hmm, I gotta say, I, I'm seeing house, mm, I think more than the other stuff. Well, let's do it, even if that's not Ex- for except, sure the winner. Yeah, I think so. They're flying in. Well, what was it? What's coming in second place? Do you think? Uh, I'm. No, so I'm trying to see. My screen's skipping a little bit. So, hang on. Oh, come on. I'm actually pretty excited to do the house. Let's one, do it. Let's I, do it. Yeah, it's a cool trick. So let's do let's that. Let's do the house. I'll, I'll I'll go into another one after. All right. Let me just don't save. Right. Hold on, guys. My computer's a bit slow, so you get to look at my face twice now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Open. What was this song called? There we go. Now, this song is not finished yet, but it will be an original. 
and I'm, I'm making two versions of it. So this is just the house version. There's also going to be a club version, which is going to be a little bit more big room than this one. Gotcha. And can you describe to people what uh, the, the big room, sort of what would define big room? Okay, I would call, if you, a big room is anything that would be played in a big room, which means, <laughs> huh. like, a, a posh club. So, uh, a, a fabric or a, a, a cream yeah, or... Somewhere that's probably the age range of 25 to 45 instead of 15 to 25. Okay. It's the little. It's a little bit older. They're much more expensive to get into. I see. It's just, it's a bigger world. It's not what I'm used to, but I do, I love the music in it. Almost as much as is I there love Electra. Would there be a, an artist uh, that would sort of define the big house? I don't know about define, but I'll tell you who some of my favorites are. One would be Avicii, uh, and he is also a kid. He's my age. He's 21. Um, so if you don't know Avicii, look him up. But I'm sure a lot of you guys know Avicii. And who else is really good? Yeah, my, my, I'm having a brain fart. Just look up Avicii. <laughs> Right, let's let's jump into this one. Okay, so I'll play from the breakdown on in this song. first drop we'll get to the second track later but um this song i'm actually i'm not 100 percent on these vocals or the kick yet those might be the two some people are asking you are those samples and if so where'd you get them or are they okay the for the vocals yeah. that's actually you know what i'm not a secrets man but that's gonna be my one secret Ooh. we have i'm sorry we guys. have found your limit <laughs> <laughs> the reason that's a secret is because it, it took me ages to find a site that had good enough vocal samples that not everyone had. So I want to I wanna wait. I'm going to tell people what site I use for these, but it's not a big site at all. So all the vocals on the site have pretty much been unused. Um, but I'm going to wait until this song gets released. And if I don't use these vocals, then I'll tell people anyways. But I want to at least make sure I get these vocals in there before anyone else uses all them. Right, so but, the site, but just to give you some information on how to do it, basically... I, what I did for this is I Google searched uh, vocal samples, house music, and I went down really far to sites that were not very popular, and I just searched my ass off till I found something usable. Okay. Because you can use all the big ones, which have good samples, but you're going to be using samples that people have used over and over and over again. All right, fair enough. Jordan's got dibs on the sample, guys. Okay? He called <laughs> shotgun. Standard shotgun rules apply. He's got the sample. But I might not use I'm actually, I'm starting to not like the sample very much, so if I do take it out, I'll, I'll release the information soon on it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's, let me dive into what I did on this track. So pretty much what it comes down to, the, the bulk of this song is just a bass line and white noise kind of similar to the last one although this is not your typical electro song so where's the bass line at let me find that that's that's what i think is cool about this song is what i'm going to show you with how what you can do with bass lines yes here we go all right sweet so 
Let me set up a loop. Let me solo this. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody, uh, Zion Oral in the in the forum asks in the chat asks a question. Can you mute the vocal and uh, uh, I'm sorry. Can you mute all other tracks and play the vocal again? <laughs> oh, you want to just hear the vocal? Yeah, he wants to sample it. He wants to so he doesn't have to look. Uh, <laughs> good one. Okay. So that's funny. All right. Yeah. So this is the sample I used. Let me set up the loop. Now I'm gonna show you what the original sample is. You're gonna see it's very, very different. So let me just mute everything on this. And, and all right, so this is what the original sample sounds like. Wow. All right, now the first thing I did was I brought the frequency down. Let's see, where did I actually bring the frequency down? So I brought it down to 75 and I brought a little bit of the resonance up. And then what I did was I added an LFO to that filter. So I brought the amount all the way up and I had the rate on 3 16 and I set the waveform to be this guy, which kind of looks like a, what does that look like? I don't know, the third one down. Um, <clears throat> and so what that did to the sample was then it made it sound like this. So the change is it the change, I don't know if you guys heard that was the difference between do 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 to do 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 it kinda it added a little bit of a wobble to it. Yeah, I'll I'll show you the difference one more time. Alright, I I I'm sure you guys will get the picture from that one. Now, the second thing I did was I added a vocoder. I did the same thing I always do, put it on e the EQ mode, and I shifted it a little bit to the right. I added on a sidechain compressor, compressor, I should say. Um, and I, then I started distorting it. So the first distortion I did was tape distortion. I had the parameters set kind of so they were all, I mean, you can see where the parameters are set like that. And I had the damage up to 60. And then I, EQ, I turned on the cut so I could turn on the EQ, and I boosted the lows and the mids, and I left the highs down low. Then I ad added on a second. So let me play it from here now. Okay, so that pretty much sounds just like the other version. It's just a little bit fuller and louder. Then the next thing I did was I added a second distortion, and this one I made it really fuzzy. So I put it on fuzz distortion and I had the damage set to 37, and I had the parameters all the way to the right side. And then this one, actually, this is kind of stupid because I just brought all the EQs to the same frequency, it looks like. I should have just turned up the master because all that is is making it louder. But anyways, <clears throat> yeah, don't, don't worry about it, that EQ. That did nothing. But now it sounds like this. But I wasn't happy with the bass. There wasn't enough bass in it, so I added a nasty bass. And I got this. It's still not that bass heavy. I might actually at some point in the song have it just be this. But that's the bass line right there. So as you can see, you, you can really change a bass line. It doesn't matter what sample you're using. You can change a bass line using the LFO. Um, you can make it kind of sound more unique so i really recommend we have a, a great question that came in from banana face um <laughs> all right banana face <laughs> banana face wants to know and now i want to know too um when yeah. you're doing the sound design stuff uh particularly with synths oh. and, and basses and stuff uh, how much of this is trial and error and how much of it is uh, like you know strategy like i know the steps i need to do to make this sound okay for the first two years of me doing electronic music it was 100% trial and error. Um, and the last year, I kind of, I, for a while, I didn't even, like, I didn't put in the time to remember what I was doing. I was literally just twisting knobs till it sounded right to me. And then about last year, I was like, you know what, I'm going to make this a lot simpler on myself, actually learn what this stuff does, figured it out, and so now I, I go in with a plan. I'd say some of it is still trial and error. 
um, like especially with distortions. I'll play around with different distortions till I figure out how I want it to sound. But if I'm in like a Thor or a Maelstrom, I have a goal that I want to go for, and I can pretty much do it with the knowledge that I now have of of those instruments because I've I've, pr- I've spent a lot of time with them. So that's not that much trial and error anymore. But I'm always trial and erroring with the distortion units still to this day because I haven't quite figured out what everyone does. I know if I put on fuzz, it's going to sound fuzzier. Digital, it's going to be a bit crushed. I know that much, but I don't know uh, 100% what it's going to be doing. Gotcha. So should I keep going? Are there any more questions about this? Um, nothing about that. Uh, I've got a few questions I've written down. Oh, well, actually, um, one thing someone uh, wanted to know is, are these yeah. sounds that are going to be in an upcoming uh, refill, or is this? Yeah, well, not this one, because this one's a sample. But the other other ones, yes. Any, any sounds that you hear that are synth-like will probably be in a refill at some point. Or a tutorial, or given away for free somewhere else. They'll they'll be available somehow. Cool. Okay. Oh, my seltzer water went flat. Now it's just water. It's just, yeah, it's With true. like, what is it called? Guan guanine. Ra- raspberry. It's raspberry. Oh, raspberry essence. Water. Yeah. Oh, no good. <clears throat> All right. So, let's keep keep it moving. So the other thing I did to this was I did white noise, but on this white noise, this is going to be an example of not side chaining the white noise the same way. I remember someone asked, do you side chain the white noise? And this one I do, but in a different way. So let's take a listen to the bass line one more time with the white noise. And then I'm just going to solo the white noise and show you what I did. Actually, that's not a good place to do it because there's also an impact there. Let me do it here. Okay, so it kind of just sounds like someone spraying like a spray paint bottle the whole time throughout. That's what the air sounds like to me. But let's take a listen to just this soloed, and it'll sound like this. Oh, you know what? That's not a good way to do it because that's you're not going to hear the side chain in it. Let me go to the rack view. All right, can you guys hear that side chain? I, I can. Right. I, I think yeah. everybody probably could. You're talking about just the just okay. that volume dip on that noise, right? Right, but but the thing that's different about this volume dip to the the white noise I did on the electro track was that the bass drum that I routed the side chain to, I brought down the length of it. So this right here, so the bass drum was really short. So while most bass drums the length would be all the way up, I had this bass drum really, really, really short. So you're really only getting a tiny dip in volume uh, for that section. Not, not that the volume is going to go down low, but it's only going to dip for a really, really short amount of time. And what that does is it gives it this effect that like, when the bass drum hits, there's no white noise for a second, but then it's right back in your face. Um, and that's how you get that really big club sound. Like, so it's just filled with white noise, which is if it was side chain here, let me see if I can show you the difference with the length just by automating it live. Let's see if this works. Could you guys hear that? Could you hear that difference? I think so. I mean, I, I could hear. I, I think other people could as well. Okay. There's a question. Um, DJ Subterrain wants to know, uh, is, is yes. white noise better than uh, uh, open hi-hats? Is there a reason you go to those instead of open hi-hats? Oh, well, I also use open hi-hats. I see them as totally different things. For open, for white noise, I think of it as like, say you're painting a picture and the background is white, but you want everything to sort of have the tint of yellow for the painting. You would paint the entire canvas yellow before you'd start painting the picture. So with, with white noise, I think of it as that. It's like, it's this thing in the background that's going to be covering the entire space. You don't have to have it cover the entire space you can actually like chop it up and do little cool noises i'll show you what i what i did later in the song i did some chops of it and it kind of sounds like little spurts of air but it's not used as a hi-hat i still use hi-hats as open hi-hats as as the in-between normal house groove that gives it that house noise noise is a separate thing i do both so don't don't give up hi-hats for the white noise i'd say try and incorporate both <laughs> 